in the Saharan desert of North Africa, surrounding the fertile soil of the Nile Valley, lies Egypt, a land of astonishing wonder and unparalleled beauty. Historically, one of the most advanced ancient civilizations of its time. Even until this day, the mysteries and secrets of the only surviving wonder of the ancient world dumbfound the most sophisticated engineers and scholars of today. Some of the greatest rulers to have walked this earth have come from the land of Egypt. Hatshepsut, Nefertiti and Amenhotep, Tutankhamun, and Ramses. Religion and devotion to the supernatural are evident throughout the history of Egypt. Countless artifacts, writings, monuments, temples, and tombs embody the understanding of an afterlife in the Pharaonic Age. With the advent of Jesus Christ, Christianity dominated the Egyptian landscape for the first few centuries AD. Since the 7th century, the religious devotion of the Egyptian people has continued under the cross and the crescent, where Muslims currently make up the majority of Egypt's population. The word Coptic traces its roots to the age of the pharaohs. Egypt's pharaonic name was Hekupta, meaning House of the Energy of Ptah. Ptah being the religious name for Memphis, ancient Egypt's capital city. This in turn evolved into the Greek name Aegyptos, and then the Arabic name Kipt or Gipt, from which we derive the names Egypt and Copt. Therefore, the words Coptic and Egyptian are synonymous. Over time, the words Coptic and Christian have also become interchangeable. The Coptic language is still used today in the church's worship and hymns. Its letters evolved from the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and currently bear many similarities with Greek. In fact, the Coptic alphabet is comprised of the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet and seven letters unique to the Coptic language. The word Orthodox literally means straight opinion. The Orthodox Church has kept her same Christian faith and teachings since the time of Jesus Christ and his followers, the Apostles. The Orthodox Church has a direct connection to the early Christian Church. The sources of Orthodox Christian teaching have passed from one generation to the next through both oral and written tradition. These sources include the Holy Bible, ancient liturgies, rites, and prayers, the Acts of the Christian Martyrs and Saints, the writings of the early Church Fathers, and the very spirit of the Church's life. To understand how Christianity spread in the land of Egypt, we must look back further to the age of the pharaohs. The Greek historian Herodotus described the Egyptians as excessively religious, more so than any other people in the world. Ancient Egyptian civilization centered around religion in all its activity. The people of ancient Egypt had an optimistic view of the world and a belief in the afterlife. Although polytheistic, the religion of the ancient Egyptians came to identify Amun-Ra, the great god of Thebes, as the most important. The ancient Egyptians also carried a tradition that Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld, was murdered by his violent and jealous twin brother Set. However, Osiris resurrected and received eternal life. Against the backdrop of these mythological stories, the minds of the Egyptians were ready to embrace 
the reality of Christianity. In the Holy Bible, the Gospel according to St. Matthew tells the story of the Holy Family's flight to Egypt. Jesus and his family found refuge there as they fled the persecution by Herod the Great, King of Judea. Although the Bible is silent about the details of this journey, much has passed on to the Church through oral and written tradition. The Holy Family made a number of stops along the Nile Valley. Since then, monasteries and churches have been established all over Egypt in places where the Holy Family visited or stayed. After his resurrection, Jesus Christ sent his disciples and apostles to preach Christianity to the whole known world at that time. St. Mark, one of the four Gospel writers and an apostle, preached in Alexandria and founded its church in the year 48. For this reason, the Coptic Church recognizes St. Mark as her first pope. Since then, the Church has ordained bishops, priests, and deacons to provide pastoral care for the Church. Because these clergy come from a continuous line that traces back to the Apostle Mark, the Coptic Church is considered an apostolic church. To illustrate this point, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III, the current leader of the Coptic Orthodox Church, is the 117th Patriarch Successor of St. Mark. Today, the Coptic Church continues to flourish in Egypt and abroad. There are churches in over 100 dioceses on all the inhabited continents of the world. There are well over 160 churches in North America, including about 40 churches in California alone. The Coptic Church has also established monasteries in the United States, Australia, and Europe. Over the centuries, the Coptic Church has made many contributions to Christianity as a whole. Among them is the ancient school of Alexandria founded by St. Mark. The School of Alexandria's disciplines included theology, the humanities, science, and mathematics. In the early years of the Church, it gave rise to numerous spiritual leaders both within Egypt and abroad. As such, its program has served as a model for today's seminaries and theological institutes all over the world. A second important contribution is the preservation of the Christian faith. Since the early days of her existence, the Church has fought against heresies that deviate from a proper understanding of the path to salvation or the person of Jesus Christ. Through her Holy Fathers, the Coptic Church played an important role in preserving the true Christian faith. The Church Fathers are a group of bishops, priests, monks, and laymen who lived in the early centuries of the Church. In order to fight heresy, the Fathers met in councils to properly express the faith. The Fathers of Egypt played an important role in this effort. Among them, Saint Athanasius, the 20th Pope of the Coptic Church, championed the first ecumenical council at Nicaea in 325 AD. He wrote the Creed, the Statement of Faith, still used by all the Apostolic Churches today. Because of his important role in preserving the faith, Saint Athanasius endured many hardships during his lifetime. He was banished from his position five times and spent more than 17 years in exile. The well-known expression, Athanasius against the world, defined his commitment to guarding the faith. Third, the Orthodox Church recognizes and honors martyrs, men and women who suffered and died for their faith. While the early years of the Coptic Church were marked by relative peace, 
The second and third centuries saw twenty-one waves of persecution, the fiercest one under the reign of the Roman Emperor Diocletian. During his reign, the church offered countless martyrs, by some estimates between 500,000 and 1 million. For this reason, the Coptic Church begins its calendar in 284 AD, the first year of Diocletian's rule. The calendar is based on the year of the martyrs, Anno Martiri. For example, the year 2009 to 2010 AD corresponds to 1726 AM on the Coptic calendar. Early church historians, writers, and fathers testify to the numerous Egyptian martyrs. Tertullian, a third century North African lawyer, wrote, If the martyrs of the whole world were put on one arm of the balance, and the martyrs of Egypt on the other, the balance would tilt in favor of the Egyptians. Despite periods of martyrdom and persecution, the number of believers continued to grow. The lives of the martyrs have inspired many to embrace the Christian faith. Lastly, Christian monks and nuns can trace their order to the deserts of Egypt. After Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, the threat of persecution wore off. However, many Christians continue to have a strong desire to offer their lives to Jesus Christ. Instead of seeking martyrdom through bloodshed, they turn to the deserts. There, they lived a celibate life of sacrifice, marked by ascetic practices such as fasting, prayer, physical labor, solitude, and silence. Three Egyptian fathers are pioneers in Christian monasticism. Saint Anthony the Great is called the father of the monks. His biography continues to be one of the most influential writings in all of Christian literature. Saint Paul of Thebes is considered the first hermit, while Saint Pachomius founded a more communal form of monasticism. Today, Christian monasticism continues to call many men and women to become monks and nuns and to live a consecrated way of life. Today, the Coptic Church is marked by spiritual practices that aim at bringing her members into unity with and the knowledge of truth in Jesus Christ. These practices include fasting, prayer, and the sacramental life of the Church. Liturgical prayer is a very important part of Orthodox worship. The word liturgy literally means the work of the people. Therefore, the Divine Liturgy is the work of God's people and invites the participation of all. It is comprised of a system of rites and rituals that include prayers, supplication, chants, and readings from the Holy Bible. At the height of the Divine Liturgy is the consecration of bread and wine into the true body and true blood of Jesus Christ. The faithful partake of Holy Communion, the Eucharist, to unite with Jesus Christ and with one another. <laughs> The Coptic Church also has a very rich and ancient musical tradition. All worship services are chanted. Some melodies are said to date from the time of the pharaohs, while others have a strong Byzantine influence. Among them is the Hymn of Peace, or Epuru in Coptic. This tune was once chanted to welcome and receive the pharaohs. While the melody has remained the same since ancient times, its lyrics now reflect the Coptic Christian faith.
Coptic hymns are often accompanied by hand symbols and a triangle to maintain beat and rhythm. <laughs> Lastly, a visitor to the Coptic church will find it adorned with icons, which are images of Jesus Christ and the saints. Unlike pictures or portraits, icons are not meant to capture natural or physical characteristics, but rather the spiritual. Deep theological teachings are conveyed in the features and colors of icons. Icons are used in Coptic worship and often called windows to heaven. The Orthodox faithful do not worship the icon itself. Rather, the faithful use icons in prayer to remember the lives and events depicted, asking for the prayers and intercessions of the saints.